What's up, kind folk of Facebook and internet? Um, that, that's kind of annoying. So I've decided to show everyone on the internet um, what I've been up to recently, especially people on my YouTube channel. I haven't been posting anything or much at all of uh, what I've been doing. And I've been playing flight sim a lot of it. So I've been learning a lot about um, aircrafts and uh, just general aviation stuff. And I've decided to share to you what I've learned so far in a different aircraft I've learned to fly. Now, a lot of this, in fact, most of this is not standard operating procedure of an aircraft. Uh, I won't be following any checklists. I won't be doing any of the, the systems tests. It's just uh, from what I've learned and uh, how I'm going to go about doing it is in no particular order. It's just how I personally get things done. And it works for me. And, you know, I'm not, an, I'm not a pilot. Uh, I just do this for fun. Um, but feel free to mention anything I do wrong or if there's any improvements or, you know, if just generally I don't do it right. So um, we're going to be flying a short hop today from uh, Montreal, Pierre Elliott Trude International to Ottawa McDonald Cartier International uh, from CYUL to CYOW. It's a short trip. It's 174 kilometers planned. Um, that's about a 26-minute flight. So we're going to be flying out of... Um, this side we're going to be flying out of 2-4 left, um, out of Montreal we're going to be flying uh, Keska to all set and then we're going to be flying the River 9 for um, an RNAV approach for um, runway 25 at uh, McDonald Cartier International. So we're going to be flying, uh, it's going to be a complete manual descent and landing. Uh, it's just going to be an RNAV, the, an RNAV approach and then we'll, um, we'll fly it in as much as we can. Um, you know, this is this plane is nicknamed the Crash 8 for a reason, and it's extremely hard to flare this aircraft as well as land it, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So we're sitting in the cockpit, cold and dark, completely 100% empty. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cold and dark. It's getting to become fall, so it's pretty cold up here in Montreal. So we need to establish power into the aircraft, and we do that by operating the DC control, and we put our batteries on. And now the aircraft is going to begin its boot up procedure. Our primary flight, dis our flight displays are going to be going into test mode. So when they go into test mode, we can start by opening up our radios. And it's going to begin the startup tests. We can activate our control lock. We're not going to be using ATC um, in this particular flight because we're using a convenience runway as opposed to an actual departing runway. So we're not going to be doing that, but we'll still, we'll still be opening the, um, the comm frequencies just for, to be thorough. We'll turn on our flight management systems, or flight management computer. We'll activate our parking brake. We're going to put our weather radar to standby. So once that's done, we can clear the warnings we have. And um, I've heard the APU on these things is uh, very unreliable, however, we're going to go ahead and use it, because in the simulator, everything works great. So, uh, we'll go ahead and start up the APU. Uh, at the same time, we can turn on our position lights. Um, it's daytime, we'll need our logo lights. Emergency lights are armed. Uh, cabin altitude default, that's normal. Um, turn on our pitted heat. Actually, we shouldn't. Uh, the APU's not on. Otherwise, we'll get it. We'll drain our batteries a little too quick. But once the generator becomes available, which it should in a few seconds here, um, then we'll, there it goes. Generator. And now we're running off of the generator. So once that's done, make sure this is set to automatic. And right. we can turn our static pitted heats on. You know, our prop de ice and our ice protection systems. We can do it. We'll be flying at about. We'll be flying at a flight level of 8,000. So. so we'll see and. Alright, so, alright, so I got the new AIRAC database update, so uh, we're good till October 2014, so we can accept that. And we'll start off with our flight plan. So, from C-Y-U-L, enter. Yes, we'll clear out our message by double-clicking message. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fine. And we're going to be flying. Our first waypoint is going to be Keska. Okay. Kilo Echo. 
Sierra Kilo Alpha. Well, Cass Cup. Learn the spell. All right, Cass got us. So our first waypoint. Our second waypoint is going to be all set. A L S E T. We're flying uh, Jazz Air. So this is an actual flight plan that they do fly. And uh, that's it for the waypoints. Uh, we're going to be C, Y, O, W, C, Yow. Except. Right. So now, if we go into menu from here, we can choose to depart. We're departing out of runway 24 left, which is runway 4. For our standard instrument departure, we won't be flying. Um, the standard instruments departures out of Montreal are weird because they're all vector departures, which means they require uh, air traffic control to vector you out. Um, however, we're not going to be vectored out, and I don't want to have the vector waypoint have to deal with that, so we're not going to be flying a standard instrument departure. So we're going to move to that. So we'll go back to our menu. Uh, we'll plan our arrival straight away. We'll be landing on runway 25, so if we hit 5. For our standard terminal arrival, we'll be flying the River Nine. Uh, for runway two five, our approach is going to be on runway two five Arnav. So two. Um, Advo, so are we transitioning via anything? Let's see. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. So yeah, no, we're not transitioning by anything. So we'll go by go straight to our flight plan. So now we're going to have discontinuities in our flight plan. So if we can go down to our flight plan here. Format. So this is our for this is our flight plan. And we see we're flying in perfectly straight. Straight into Toronto. Uh, not Toronto, um, Ottawa. Alright, so we can delete these discontinuities. Uh, that last discontinuity is a whole discontinuity. And from what I've learned, you don't really want to... No reason to delete those. Why are you not deleting? There you go. No link. Delete. Delete. All right. So to Keska to all set the thorough. Now uh, some of these. If we go to our nav, flight plan, fuel in it. We're not going to set up our fuel. Uh, let's go direct to, and I've noticed that you need to direct to ourselves straight to CYUL. In order to get our, our departure, our first uh, waypoint on our departure. I have no idea why that is. Um, however, it is just the way it is. So, performance, uh, VNAV path, flight plan. Uh, see, for our thorough waypoint, is above 10,000 feet. Now, I know air... Air Canada, uh, Jazz Air 8975 flies at uh, 8,000 feet, so we're going to clear ourselves to 8,000 feet for that specific waypoint. Alright, so, all right, so we've checked all that. Uh, we have our flight management system is good. We can switch it out of uh, switch of TCAS out of format. So we've got that, that's done. All right, we can choose our nav source here, or our nav ones. We go to FMS one. Engage our yaw dampers. Make sure the um, select the source for the autopilot is on the captain side. We're gonna set our altitude for eight thousand feet. Eight thousand feet. Our fuel. We have adequate fuel. We actually have. A bit too much fuel, and I'm gonna go ahead and launch my uh, Majestic Software control panel. And uh, I'm just gonna adjust the fuel a little bit. I'm gonna put a thousand pounds of fuel in each tank, a thousand kilograms of fuel in each tank. You can calculate that and send that data to Flight Sim. It'll pause our Flight Sim. There we go. Well, I don't want 500 in each tank, I want 1,000 in each tank, so we do a 2,000. Right. I don't want to land 
into too much fuel in my tank since I don't want to have a sluggish and heavy landing. So we set our fuel for takeoff. Our yawn dampers are on, or we set our altitude, we set our nav source. Okay, so. Everything seems good. That's good, that's good. We are going to use ATC for one thing. Actually, no, we're not. But I'm going to use. I'm going to open up my flight sim commander and uh, I'm going to be able to taxi out to runway 24 left using. Uh, if you guys like the scenery I'm using, I'm using. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to mention that. I'm flying the Majestic Q400 uh, with the Fly Tampa scenery for uh, Montreal. It's a lot of fun. It's very nice. It's a lot of good visuals. Alright, so... Now, oh, I forgot we set our spoilers to taxi. I guess that's why you do checklists. So you don't forget that. Alright, uh, we can turn on our anti-skid. Set our heading for departure for 240. Because we're going to fly. We're going to fly 240 until we need to make our turn. Right. So, that that's done, that's done. That's done. Am I forgetting anything? We don't need to set our ILS frequency right now. We can turn auto feather on at this point, and at this point we can s begin to start up the engines. Um, I want to do a single engine taxi out to the runway. I have no idea if they do these in real life. Um, yeah, and we're gonna we're not gonna be unfortunately we're not gonna be pushed back. We're gonna do it just a, a push and not a push and start. It's gonna be a start and turn. So. Um, Ready for that? All right. So, set our conditions to off. Condition levers to off. All right. At this point, we can bleed the air from the APU. APU bleed is on. All right. So, APU bleed is on. Let's start with engine one. Jeez. All right then. Cockpit, let's go for the overhead view. Control cockpit. So auto feather select. Our RPM of the engines is going to go for 30 RPM. Condition levers to start and feather. Like I said, I'm not. I might probably not starting up the engine as how they really do start the engines up. However, this is a technique that I found that works for me, and it's all about having fun. There's a reason why I'm not a pilot. This is probably it. All right. Top condition lever to minimum. So we're going to begin our taxi out to runway 24.
would help to release the parking brakes, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Oh yeah, this is the aircraft that you have to use the nose wheel steering. I haven't used the Majestic in a while. Ooh, we're gonna cut close. Oh crap. Okay, I probably would have hit it in real life, but you know, well, it's just a game, thankfully. Yikes. I can't see out my window, but get myself in one of those systems. Let's cut our speed back just a wee tad. taxi scene, but we'll get there. So once we take off, uh, once we get to our cruise altitude, at that point, I'll quit and resume, and then uh, we'll meet back up once we're uh, ready for a once we hit our top descent. Uh, the top of descent is not calculated in this twin turboprop, however, we are still going to fly about 20 miles out. I mean, we are only at 8,000 feet, so we don't need a lot of, of descent room. So, I'm going to pause at 20 miles from the air airport, and we're going to go ahead and begin our descent at that point. I have the chart for the RNAV approach, so we'll try to fly it as to the book as we can, and I'm probably taxiing a little too quick. And, uh, yeah, so should go well. We need to set our ground proximity warning flaps 15. I like to land to flaps 15. And uh, yeah, well, we've got to remember to set our flaps for takeoff. And we better hope nobody's using this runway to land on. It doesn't seem like it. However, they could be using 6 right. And whoa, 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 whoa. Let's calm down a little bit. So I'm gonna be these. This little short hop is perfect for demonstrating um, a couple of the aircrafts I'm learning how to fly. Uh, more specifically, you know, uh, some of the more uh, let's say advanced simulated aircraft, uh, some of the PMDG stuff. Uh, there's a couple of the a couple of the aircrafts I have that I'm not completely familiar with how to fly. This is probably the one I'm the most familiar with in terms of the systems. This and a PMDG. Uh, NGX, as well as uh, I, the Aerosoft Airbus X Extended, uh, I'm extremely familiar with. And actually, come to think of it, I'm probably I'm probably more familiar with that aircraft than I am with this one. But nonetheless, this aircraft is pretty good. And um, looks like we're coming up close to the end of the runway here. We probably could turn this next. Point. However, I'd like a, 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 like a nice long start on my runway. I want to take off. And uh, that was weird. Uh, probably not taxiing to 15 knots, but you know. That's, I'll have to transfer fuel to the other tank to even out the fuel consumption. I'm probably consuming a lot of fuel out of my. The end of the runway is coming up here in a little bit. Another 200 feet or so. We'll just speed it up a bit. The one love I have for this aircraft is the sound effects. I mean, it just sounds absolutely beautiful. Okay, okay. steering to turn. Alright, so we're going to position ourselves before we're going to hold short of the runway. Right. So you want to hold 
short all the time. Let's go to idle. Right. So let's set our parking brake. So we can go ahead and start the other engine. Start engine again. Okay. We'll be taking off flaps. Flaps what? Flaps ten. Route on the runway, we'll do our last checks. So this is in no way standard operating procedure of this aircraft. And let the accidental engine shut down. Just let you know, you know how much I know about aircraft at this point in time. set. Now I didn't set my V speeds because I didn't calculate my V speeds, but we'll assume V1 at 140 knots. So here we go, 80 knots. Yeah, it's 120. Okay, all right, 120 V1 rotate. <laughs> Waypoint. At that point, we'll indicate to uh, activate our navigation. 
Cruise out to 8,000 feet. So once we're in cruise, we'll set it up for cruise and then we'll rejoin ourselves when we're at the top of the set, uh, or about 20 miles out from the uh, airport. Get our descent and uh, well, hopefully land the plane. That's the, that's the plan. So, 6,800 feet. There we go, there's 1,000 more within 1,000 feet. So, we'll get there within about, within about 30 seconds. So at this point, I can dump the condition lever to 850 for our cruise. And our speed just starts slowing down a bit. Yeah. So we can transfer fuel to tank one. 925. Oh, the other way. Excuse me. I didn't say it was. That was an eight, not a nine. likes to sit in around 240. There we go. Alright guys, we're in cruise right now. And um, uh, we've got about how much? We've got about 15 minutes before we head up to uh, our top of the set. Uh, top of the set, I'm going to make it in about, I think, around thorough. feet at thorough and it will begin our descent at the so um, we'll see you guys then all right guys we're back um, we're three miles out from our top of the set and uh, we're gonna assume our top of the set is right now so we're gonna get right into it um, very simple for my at least for the not our exactly precision plan descent but we need to be at 3,000 feet by the next waypoint 25 miles to go we're at 8,000 feet, I think we'll make it. Then we go altitude select. And we can choose our vertical speed. We'll go for a slightly slow descent. We'll work about, let's say, 1,500 per minute. And we're going to start. 
starting to pick up a lot of speed. So we're gonna dump this into flight idle. Just so that we're not slowing, just so that we're not speeding up too bad. Yeah, we're actually slowing down now, so a little bit of juice. So we'll be getting the descent. 22 miles to go, and then it's all gonna happen very quickly. It's gonna be uh, 3,000 feet, 2,000 feet, and then we're gonna land. It's, uh, once we stop, we'll show you how to shut down and clean up. And, uh, we'll park at some sort of gate. Uh, we set our GP to ground proximity warning system for laps of 15. Which means we're landing at laps 15. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'll go back. Anything else we need to worry about at this moment in time? Not particularly. De-ice everything. Just de-ice it all. Detected. We're in good shape, so we're keeping the wings clean. There's a lot of stuff in this aircraft. Like the weather radar, which I haven't shown you guys. We put it in standby, but we never used it. There's no need to really. Once we hit our altitude constraint, the airplane is going to start to slow down a lot. So, once that's going to happen, we're getting a little close. We'll just we'll drop it down to 200 knots. We're getting close. 3,000 at Viv Max. If you look here. Viv Max. Six miles to drop a thousand feet of altitude. Yeah, that's more than enough. So once we hit Tefly, Tefly, and we're going to go down to two thousand feet. And, uh, keep them on. Am I all, am I all while being mindful and watching our speed. I have made that mistake where you, know, you don't put the you don't put the power back up, and then all of a sudden you realize, why the hell am I stalling? All right, now we're back up. for the camera, I guarantee you I'll either crash, over flare, under flare, bounce on the runway, or it's not going to go according to plan. So just, you guys have to imagine that I know how to fly this plane if I don't do that right. You'll just have to take my word for it. Set our altitude for our next, which is 2,000. It's 
2500. Make sure all the temperatures set correctly. Altitude select. And I assume it'll take us about a minute, so if we put it at 1000 feet per minute for our vertical speed. Three miles. Let's not get overzealous here. start picking up speed. We don't want to get too quick, um, you know, because we are coming in, you know, probably have the airfield almost in sight, so. It's a pretty foggy day today. Okay. All right, so here we go. Waypoint, nose down at 1,000 feet. No, not 1,900. Jesus. 1,000. Bring our throttle closer to idle. Alright, so we're going for our LNAV approach. This time we can drop our gear. And, uh, well, we'll go a little too fast for flaps one. Do flaps one at about flaps. Stall the plane. Let's not let's not stall the plane, please. All right, there's the runway. Well, it's time to turn on our controller. We are flying a multi-million-dollar aircraft with a fifty-dollar Microsoft. And I know that, you know, you're probably, I'm probably supposed to disable the autopilot a little bit closer, or I don't know when I'm supposed to disable the autopilot. When I, I'll disable the autopilot when I damn well feel like it, all right? Gear down, flaps, we're going at a good speed, 6.8, that's good, nice and slow. See any white lights, which means we're uh, above the wide slope. So the minute we start to see lights, that's when we're gonna go for our autopilot disconnect. There's the first white light. All right. Autopilot. Okay. We can start pitching the nose down a bit. Get us on the glide slope. Let's straighten our wing. Pull our wings out a bit. speed of it. Along the glide slope, which is good. There we go, we're going. There we go, we're going down. Far off to the runway. Let's correct that. A little bit high. Let's correct that. Going to the left. To the right, right, not the left. Jeez. Thank you. All right, let's All right, so we're going to be trying to intercept it. We're right on the glide slope. Slight Thank you. It scares the bejesus out of me every time he says that. I'm concentrating on not trying to land the plane. And here we come. Here we go. Alright, we're gonna dump all the throttle. Yeah. Here we go. 
Oh boy. Here it's coming, it's coming. Minimums. Minimums. Landing. 500 landing. Decision height. 100. 100. Made it, guys. We are here in one piece, live. Thank friggin' God. Uh, we're gonna begin taxiing back to the gate. I'm getting fired. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the grass. We decided to show you the seating group. Okay, okay all right, come on, we get the point. We're on the grass. Notice, the observant ones will notice that there is no building. There's a reason for that. My computer sucks. My frame rate is terrible, and you know what? Let's just go on the grass. Who cares? Why would the plane go where I want it to go? And I decided if it's my plane, I'll take it where I want. aircraft down and uh, we'll bid you good night until the next one. Flying same flight, same aircraft, same well, the same flight, same game. Just different aircraft generators available. Alright, so no, what was I? I was about to close that off. Alright. So AP was on, we can turn our condition levers off. It's off. Throttle disconnect. Off. Parking brake is on. We can go ahead and clear our flight. Go under our flight plan. Menu. Delete flight plan. Direct to 99 on the scratch pad. Hit enter. It clears that out. Now from 99 on the scratch pad again. That clears that. 
I don't know why it doesn't, it just does. Turn off. Stand by. Turn off. Turn off. Off and stand by. Turn off. Turn on our warnings. Axial lights off. Lights. Exterior lights. Off. Hitting static heats. Off. Off the ice. Off. Airframe the ice. Off. Air conditioning engine 1 and 2 boot off. That's off. Seat belts and no smoking off. AC control. Generator 1 and 2. Bus tie off. Weather radar. Weather radar is off. Let's switch over to TCAS. Disable weather X. Yaw damper is off. Clear the caution. Anti skid off. And uh, is that just about it? At this point, we can turn our APU gen community generator off. Power off. Standby batteries, auxiliary batteries, main batteries, and battery master. And uh, we're back in the cold and dark aircraft. And uh, everything's good. We're all shut down. We're up in Ottawa. We've taken off. We've flown. We haven't. I don't think we've ruptured any landing gear. So any landing you can walk away from is a good one. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Dash Eight Q Four Hundred. Please join me for the next one, which is, I have no idea what it is. So, uh, hope everyone enjoys. Hope everyone's enjoyed their time watching me. And I've certainly enjoyed showing you guys what I've been doing these past month or two. So, um, have a great day.